Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. My name is Greg Sykes. Hey, if you're new here, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you don't mind, please consider subscribing to this channel. When you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so you will never miss another video release here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. Let's get into today's video. So, another heartbreaking loss by the Washington Commanders. Um, they lose in the last seconds of the game today against the Tennessee Titans. This was a home game for the Washington Commanders. Um, Carson Wentz throws a costly pick at the end of the game. Seals the deal for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, now Washington goes to 1-4 uh, and four on the season. Uh, season is definitely in jeopardy at this point because you look at the other NFC East teams, uh, the Giants, beat the Packers today, they're 4-1. and one. The Giants are 4-1. and one. Um, You got, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles, who are 4-0. Oh. Uh, they're still undefeated. You got the Dallas Cowboys sitting at 3-1. and one. If I'm not mistaken, don't we have a Cowboys-Eagles game coming up? Is that tonight? So, you know, certainly... Uh, even if you wind up seeing a five and zero, four and one, three and two, you're looking at the Commanders at one and four. So regardless, uh, the Commanders are really buried right now in the cellar. And honestly, this was a must-win game for the Washington Commanders. Every game is a must-win at this point. But at one and four, uh, your team is in trouble, <laughs> very much in trouble. You know, it would be different if you could look at the other NFC East teams and, you know, how it was back in 2020 when every single NFC East team was terrible. That's not the case this year. It's, this year is actually the NFC beast. You have three of the teams that are playing really good football right now. And, of course, fourth one, the Washington Commanders are, are horrible. So let's break it down. I mean, what happened in today's game? Well, certainly the offensive line, I mean, we, we continue to see an offensive line that is totally in shambles. Um, Andrew Norwell was not a good replacement for, for Brandon Sheriff. And I realized that they play opposite uh, positions. Brandon Sheriff played the right guard position. Um, Andrew Norwell is playing the left guard position. Uh, still, it was supposed to be one of those, okay, well, we lost Brandon Sheriff, but we're picking up another Pro Bowl player, so we'll be okay. No. Norwell has been awful. He got trucked today. I mean, it was bad. I mean, it was just bad. And then you look at Nick Martin, our center today. Uh, is he like our fourth starting center this year already uh, in, what, five games? And he was terrible. I mean, so many snaps that wound up falling to the ground. Um, fumble, snap exchanges. I mean, just it was just horrible. He, he he was terrible. He was so terrible today. Um, really, honestly, the only guy on the offense line that I felt had a pretty solid day was Charles Leno. I felt Charles Leno, he's been solid. Um, is he anywhere near the um, offensive uh, or the, all, the left tackles that we have had in past history? You know, no, no. We, we have been, that's one thing that, uh, this Washington franchise has always been good at, and that's drafting uh, Pro Bowl players and your left tackle. You know, we had um, Chris Samuels for a long time, and then after Chris Samuels, we had uh, Trent Williams, who was just a beast. Can't keep these guys, right? I mean, well, of course, you know, Samuels retired, but, you know, Trent Williams, We obviously, obviously we know what happened with him. And then after that, we just have not had a, a good answer there at left tackle. Uh, but, you know, I mean, Charles Leno has, has done a commendable job. But the rest of the offensive line is terrible. You can see it almost every single time that Carson Wentz drops back to pass. That offensive line is getting pushed backwards. There is no push within this offensive line whatsoever. And because of that, we're also seeing a lack of a running game. Uh, the running game has been terrible, and come on, we've we've got at least three 
solid running backs who could really take over a football game. Uh, so great to see Brian Robinson back out there again. Um, his first game of the season, his first game back since that terrible shooting. And, you know, he had a tough time. He did, I mean, you, you saw some some short yardage plays that, you know, Robinson was not going to be denied the first down, which was great, but wasn't wasn't the game that we were expecting, certainly. But, you know, they were going to ease him back in anyway. So I wasn't expecting Brian Robinson to have, like, you know, four touchdown passes and 325 yards rushing. But, you know, at the same time, uh, you did expect a little bit more out of the running game. And you know why? Well, that's because that you have to have a offensive coordinator who's going to call some running games, uh, some running plays. And um, I think Scott Turner's play calling continues to be uh, very predictable. And because of that, they're just teeing off on Carson Wentz. You know, I did see Carson Wentz getting the ball out of his hands much quicker, which was good. But, you know, the thing is, I said it before, yes, you can have the short passing plays, which are an extension of the running game, but you can't so you know you just can't get away from that running game completely. And I felt like that's what we do a lot of times. And so uh, and and you know the other thing is, why be in the shotgun all the time? How about you mix it up? You know, how about you mix up personnel? I mean, get creative with it. There's no creativity in the offensive play calling whatsoever. Um, but that offensive line is not helping one bit. Then you get to the defense. The defensive line was, oh, man, they were fantastic today. I don't want to hear another word, another bad word about Montez Sweat. This was definitely his coming out party. I mean, he he put pressure on, on Ryan Tannehill all day long. And certainly John Allen, I mean, he's, he's just a beast. He, he is so, it's so great to know that we have John Allen for a while. Uh, Deron Payne, again, you know, we've got to find a way to get him back next year. Deron Payne, man. Um, you know, and Smith Williams got into the deal as well. I mean, the defensive line is fantastic. And just think when Chase Young comes back, it's going to be even more solid. Uh, and then you get to the, you know, the linebackers and Cole Holcomb, he's a, he's a tackling machine. I don't want to hear any bad words about Cole Holcomb. I think Cole Holcomb is a fantastic player. He's a fantastic linebacker, uh, but he has no other help. Um, I've just been bitterly disappointed with Jamin Davis. I just don't think he's that great of a player. I think that was a missed opportunity with the pick. Um, haven't seen much of John Bostic. I don't know if he has even gotten in there, but um, Cole Holcomb has really been the sole linebacker. And I will say I have to applaud the fact that we finally benched William Jackson III. I'm not trying to be a hater, but let's just say it like it is. William Jackson III, he, he just, he's not worth the money. He is not worth the money. I am so glad that we benched him because it seems like after he got pulled, the, uh, the coverage was a lot better. You started getting some more pressure on Ryan Tannehill because the coverage was better. And it wasn't always the coverage, but at the same time, that helped. And so because of that, we continued to eat. And, you know, the secondary did well. Of course, that, that one pass that I'm not sure how uh, Bobby McCain could not recover enough to defend that pass it was a 60-some yard pass downfield that set the Titans up for a score before the half. I mean, how do you not defend that? I mean, it looked like that he had plenty of time to get there and to knock that pass down, and, well, it just didn't happen. Uh, but other than that, you know, I, I thought the secondary played well once we got William Jackson the third out of there. Um, so, overall, defense really did its job. The offense did not do its job, and this continues to be, this continues to be the thing. And you're one and four now. If you make changes at this point, is it going to matter? Well, it may matter for next season, but I think at this point you have to start making changes just to show that you you're fed up. It's one thing to sit there, and I'm I'm going to bash on Ron right now. It's it's, it's one thing to stand in front of the uh, media and say, oh, yes, I'm very disappointed. And, yes, we need to do this and we need to do that. And then you look at it and it feels like, what changes did we make? 
because it is the same story week in and week out. The same things happen week in and week out. So how can you sit there and say, yes, there's going to be some changes? Well, maybe it's just a different way that we lose. That's the only change I seem like, you know, other than, oh, we're going to also lose in this this uniform this time. You know, we've lost in just about every um, combination of uniform that we can get. I think the only thing that's left is to wear the all burgundies. Maybe we'll do that on on Thursday night and, and finish the, uh, the tour of losing with every single uh, uniform that we can, we can wear. I mean, yes, I'm frustrated, but I mean, come on. When that, that's the only changes I've really seen with this team. And I'm sorry, but Ron Rivera, I tell you, man, your clock management is poor. It's horrible. It's very horrible. I don't understand calling a timeout there toward the end of the first half. You know, Tennessee gets that big play, and they're like, all right, I'm just not going to call any more timeouts. That that shows me right there that you have no confidence in this team. Why'd you even call the first timeout? If you're not going to stop the clock anymore, you might as well would have just left the clock rolling. Shoot, maybe there would have been some uh, you know, negative plays against Tennessee that would have left them with the clock you know, not on their side. I mean, you're obviously not playing to get the ball back at that point. And it was just, was dumb. I was dumbfounded. And then uh, certainly the um, the call where, you know, was it a catch? Was it not a catch? Uh, it kind of goes back to the Des Bryant days, right? And with Cam Sims, I thought it was a catch, but it was one of those that if they call it incomplete, then you can challenge it and it's going to remain incomplete. If they called it complete on the field, then chances are it would have stayed completed if, um, you know, if Tennessee had challenged it because it's just one of those plays that there probably would not have been enough, uh, you know, evidence either way to have overturned it. It just so happened that the referees called it incomplete and you probably should have just left it like that. I think had they done that, well, guess what? You know, the Commanders would have had one more timeout left, and they could have possibly ran a running play there toward the end in the goal. You know, uh, in the red zone, there was that one play. Certainly, Carson Wentz was back there, and maybe because they didn't have a first or one timeout left, that Carson Wentz didn't take off and run. But, you know, it sure looked like that he had a good amount of running lane that he probably could have taken out, you know, taken off and who knows, maybe given his, himself up for the score, but he didn't do it. And, well, you know, we all knew what happened after that. So, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's terrible. Uh, this team is in shambles all together. It's not just the players and it's not just the coaches. This whole team, it, it, everybody deserves blame. And, you know, what can I say? You know, it, it's just a terrible team. Terrible teams find ways to lose winnable ball games, and that's exactly what happened today. Um, so now you've got the Washington Commanders at 1-4 and four and pretty much on the brink of death, and they got to go and play the Chicago Bears on Thursday. So a quick turnaround they lose against the Bears, it's over. At one and five, you're not coming back this season. You're not coming back at all. One and four, you are on life support, and chances are maybe like at 12%, 15% maybe. But one and four, with your uh, the rest of the teams in the division have only lost one game apiece, and then you have one that's undefeated, you're not coming back from that. It's over. It's done. So that's the way I feel about it. Hey, look, I'm one of the more optimistic fans that you'll ever talk to. I mean, I am always, I'm not a rah-rah guy, but I'm, I'm close to it. And I can, I'm even telling you right now, this season is sunk. It's over. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section. You probably will agree with me. Um, some of you guys will probably just, you know, find some reason to, you know, make a post about my hair or make a post that, I shouldn't wear shades or whatever, and I really don't get any of that junk. But anyway, 
Let me know what you think in the comment section if you enjoy this video as much as I have. Um, like it, share it with your buddies. Um, give me some comments that are, are worth reading. Let's talk about this game. Yeah, you want to support this channel, you can do so on Patreon. You can do so in other ways like this. Can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let